So let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the metadata that is stored for files inside of a file system. So metadata is information about a file. Uh, and this data is stored inside something called an inode uh, and is manipulated by the file system or the kernel. Uh, you can call stat or fstat in order to obtain a file's metadata if you want to. Um, you will need uh, a couple of include files in order to access that information. Uh, and there's a lot of different information uh, that is stored about a file, so its type, um, the owner and the group IDs, uh, various permission bits, which we'll talk about here in a second, its size, the time and date stamps of its uh, last access or modification or creation time, um, the location where it's at, and you know pointers to the actual data that are stored on disk. Uh, sometimes these pointers are direct, and sometimes there is sort of these multiple layers of pointers to get to all the different pieces of the file. Let's talk a little bit more specifically about permissions. So the traditional Unix permissions model is that there are uh, three groups of three bits. So uh, each group contains three bits, one to that represents read permission, one that represents write permission, and one that represents execute permission. Uh, and you may recognize this from the, uh, the, um, the flags field in the program headers uh, way back in uh, project two. Uh, so these are stored in the inode. These are interpreted uh, using octal. Uh, and uh, that's just sort of because there are, are three bits there, and so it's convenient to, to use octal to, to represent them. Um, and that's because each group of three bits uh, can be represented as one octal digit. Uh, and then there are three categories, so there are three groups of these bits, uh, user, group, and other. So here you can see a uh, graphical picture of these things similar to the output from project two. So we have the three bits that correspond to the user, the three bits that correspond to the group, and the three bits that correspond to the other. And then the uh, output at the beginning here is indicating whether or not it's a directory. So uh, every file has a user owner and a group owner. Uh, and then, uh, and that corresponds to the user and group permissions. And then the other permissions are everyone else. So anyone who is not the owner of the file or in the group that owns the file. And you can look at output that looks like this for any file on the system that you have access to uh, using ls-l. So uh, this will output uh, more information than ls normally outputs. And in particular, it will uh, begin the output with all of these permission bits. And then you can also get more information about which groups you're in by running the groups command. You can change permissions of a file using the chmod uh, command. So this will change permissions, and there are uh, a variety of ways to call this. So for instance, u plus x will add execute permissions for the user. So the uh, plus means add. So this means user add execute. So whatever this file permission, whatever the file permissions were for this file beforehand, uh, this will add the execute permission for the owner user. Uh, this one will remove write permission for uh, the group and for other. Uh, this will add the read permission for everyone, so all. Uh, so that'll you know turn on this bit, this bit, and this bit, uh, and then chmod. You can you can just give it the octal, uh, and that will set the permissions. Uh, uh, appropriately. So here you can see we're uh, using permission 644, which corresponds to read write for the user, uh, just read for the group, and just read for the, uh, for the other or anyone else. OK, so here's a question. Uh, so give the Unix permissions in octal of a file that can be read, written, and executed by anyone, uh, which is, of course, not a fantastic idea from a security standpoint. Uh, but this is uh, just uh, merely a question. So uh, take a second and see if you can think about, so what, were, what would the three octal digits be uh, for a file that had these permissions? OK, so if uh, you have read, write, and execute permission, then all three of those bits are going to be set inside each group. Uh, and so the binary is 111, and that is 7 in octal, um, or in decimal, or hexadecimal for that matter. Uh, and so the number is going to be 777, because uh, all of the bits are going to be set in all three groups of permission bits. 
So what about this one? So give the Unix permissions an octal of a file that can be read and executed by anyone. So anybody can read and execute, but can only be read, execute, and written by the owner. So for instance, this might be a compiled program on disk where the owner uh, should be able to rewrite it if needed, but everyone else is just going to be able to read it and execute it. So think for a second about what this should be. Okay, so here we want the uh, read and execute bits to be set for the group and other. Uh, and so that's going to be the first bit and the uh, third bit. So that's going to be a binary value of five. So that's the first octal digit. And then we have five for the second octal digit. And then the user is going to have read, write, and execute permissions. Uh, and so that one's going to be seven. So this is 755 or uh, written uh, this way as it would be in the output from ls. Okay, so the last one here is uh, give the Unix permissions an octal of a file that can be read only by the owner. So uh, the owner can read it, but cannot write or execute it. Uh, and it cannot be uh, written or executed by anyone. Um, so basically the owner is the only one who can read this file and nobody can execute or, uh, or uh, write to it. So for instance, your SSH key file uh, should probably have this permission. Okay, so since uh, the user and the group should have no permissions, uh, those uh, digits should be zero, right? And all those permissions are cleared out. Uh, and then the user only has read permissions, so that's the third bit, which uh, gives it a value of four for that uh, octal digit. OK, so those are traditional Unix permissions. There's actually a newer mechanism called access control lists uh, that is more complex, uh, but is also far more flexible. Uh, and this lets you set uh, the permission any desired granularity. So you can pick particular users and give them particular permissions. And you would do this using uh, the set FACL um, uh, uh, utility, or you can use git FACL to um, to uh, obtain the permissions to look at them. So this is very useful for fine grained permissions. And this is actually what we do in 261 for your PA submission folder. So here's an example uh, from this year. Uh, so uh, in your submission folder, so the folder that is specific for you, uh, I have read, write, and execute permissions. Uh, the other instructor, uh, Dr. Weichel, also has read, write, and execute permissions. You as well have read write permissions and then everybody else so everybody else in the cs major has no permissions so they cannot read they cannot write and they cannot execute uh, the files in your submission folder and then same for anybody else who is a user on that system so uh, this is obviously more flexible, um, but there are some uh, weird interactions with traditional permissions. Basically, the effective permissions are sort of the intersection of the traditional and the ACL. So this gives you more flexibility, but it's also uh, significantly more complicated. So we won't be covering these in any uh, greater detail in this course.